the Allahu. I'm in William Gallagher. This is 58 Keys. And as ever, as always, 58 Keys is for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads in our writing. If you're watching this in Christmas week 2020, this is the last of five interviews with writers from television, theatre, novels, non-fiction, software development. If you're watching later, then all five editions are in a playlist here on the 58 Keys channel. Now, since this is the last of the five, this is in fact the Christmas Day 2020 episode. So today's writer is one who does write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. He does write radio and fiction. He does write non-fiction and he has been fired off a TV show. But the real reason to interview this writer today is he's the only one available on, on Christmas Day. William Gallagher, welcome to 58 Keys. Thank you very much for being on the show. You know, this this Christmas Day gag, that doesn't work at all because this is clearly pre-recorded, is it? So this is just ego, isn't it? Yeah, all right. I, no, no, it can't be ego because every time we've done this before, we have really seriously not got on. 58 Keys. hosting the call? Fine. Okay. Fine. We'll discuss it yeah, later. I bet you will. But I forget it's Christmas. We've just done five, uh, a whole week long series of interviews where instead of 58 Keys' his usual thing of being all about the technology behind writing, we've talked about the writing bit. I kind of want to bring it back uh, now and do a, a bit of both. I mean, you're, you are a writer who uses iPhones and Macs and iPads. Uh, let's talk about what you use and let's try to be useful uh, and explore some, maybe some new apps and new things that you found this year that other people might like as well okay 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 cool so uh how about we start just with uh what equipment do you use what do you write on uh, what mac do i well it's the same as you yeah a little bit more tiny, tiny. okay uh well you are sitting there at a 2018 mac mini with a very wide monitor and i'm looking at a 2015 ipad pro which is on its last legs it was actually quite difficult just setting this up to speak to you but yeah so it's the bigger ipad pro and i it's my old friend i really like it and uh you've got an iphone as well uh yes i have an iphone 12 uh pro now iphone 12 pro that that is an expensive phone i actually had a bit of um buyer's remorse i think over this one for a while i'm over it now but there was a patch there where particularly this year because the iPhone 12 is so similar to the iPhone 12 Pro, but it's a couple of hundred pounds cheaper. I mean, uh, practically all of the innards are the same. It feels the same, looks the same. I think it weighs the same. The screen is the same. The, so, the differences are so, so small that I, I wondered whether I'd made a, a very bad mistake uh, in going for that instead of just the, the cheaper iPhone 12 or indeed any iPhone. I liked my old iPhone 11 Pro. Uh, but I am I am past that now. I have come to really like it, and there's certain things it does that the 11 didn't that are really useful uh, to me. Um, mostly for making films rather than writing, but really useful. Uh, and because I, I write a lot for AppleInsider.com, so I see new stories going on about this, and it looks like the iPhone 12 Pro uh, it, it may be the most uh, popular of all four of the iPhone 12s that are available. So if I'm wrong about having bought that instead of the cheaper one, well, an awful lot of people are wrong as well. Does that help? I don't know. Yeah, wrongness enjoys company. This has been a pretty bad year for writers. Uh, so can I take from that that uh, you're, you're rolling in it, you're fine? Yeah, uh, maybe that was part of the buyer's remorse thing. Cause also, I, I honestly have felt a, a, a bit of survivor guilt, really, in a way, because I've done okay this year. I haven't, I haven't been. I'm a writer, and yet I haven't had that that you know, clutching fear in the chest that so many of us have uh, as all of our work vanishes. Things. I mean, I've had it before, but uh, I haven't had it this year. I've been doing okay this year I uh, right back at the start March or so March and then into the lockdown heading into April um, I lost um, I worked out at the time that I lost 40 events in one go and some of them were really big I, was, I mean I was looking forward to all of them but I was would have been traveling all over the place doing them and those were all gone and now by December 
well, I mean, lots of those events would have carried on with sequels and things. There would have been others uh, for it. I can't work it out as easily, but I, I, I'm surely 60, 70 events uh, that I would have done are, are gone. And that's obviously a massive chunk of, of my income and my time uh, for it as well. But um, on balance, uh, some of them have gone forever. Uh, some of them paid me anyway, which was great. And if they come back, I'll, I'll do the next one for well not for free but you know what I mean I'll do it for the whatever they've already paid me for it and I hope that happens I hope that happens soon because I'm really keen on those um, and lots and lots of online uh, events have come along including some that I've actually created myself which has been which has been fun so uh, what about writing what about your writing this year what have you been writing oh paralyzing at first wasn't it I mean I'm full-time freelance writer so I have commissions and you you can't not deliver on a commission uh, but creating new stuff or doing stuff um, I was gonna say for me but throughout the career I find you know you're writing the thing that you're being paid to write which is you know interesting it's a good position to be in but you always along the way you've got a, an idea for something else which you're not going to be paid for but it's really interesting I mean you're a writer you know what this is like uh, I, I, I like the fact that the giant majority of times the next thing I end up doing that is paid started as this little tiny idea in the back of my head that I couldn't resist and started in the background of things that was gone utterly wiped out I just I was incapable of I was gonna say creative writing I loathe the phrase creative writing because you don't get creative doctors do you we're writers and we write uh, but all of that digging into yourself all of that uh, real writing if you like um, I was utterly incapable I needed uh, to get out of it I, I managed to pull myself out of it and, and found ways to trick myself back into writing and, and actually uh, and to trick other people as well um, I think was it March or April now I did an online course I created a new online course specifically on uh, if you're in the state I was this is how I got out of it so far and uh, that that course did really well and I thought I mean it's a lot of work for a one-off course that clearly we were never going to need again and then we have the second lockdown and things are still as we speak now things are still going on so I think I've actually I've rerun that course certainly twice might be three times uh, now and, and actually recently I just put it up and left it up there's a version up there now it's on demand um, how to get yourself writing in times like uh, the, the COVID lockdowns and the like things that anything that's sapping you there's a, a course I really like of mine that's on demand on my website anytime you like so uh, you, you kind of dig yourself out of the hole you, you've got rid of the paralysis you're writing away what what specifically uh what are you creating what are you what are you writing uh well for the whole year it's bit usually things are split into two i suppose it's been split into three this year with so many uh online courses i was i've been hired several times now to run uh six hour zoom sessions on particular topics to do with uh, to do with writing and, and being a creative freelancer and things like that who knew a six hour workshop on zoom could be as much fun as a six hour workshop with about 25 people on it it is fantastic um, and, and part of the fun is of course the interaction we, we're all basically be gassing away for six hours but you can't expect 25 people to wait there while you think of things so i've been writing plans for it i mean four or five thousand words of notes of what each one would be about and then if we scrap that and do something completely different fine but we've got that there that's that's been a new thing a, a bigger thing this year uh there's also commissions lots of articles reviews uh lots of interviews and things i think i've done 40 or 50 interviews this year that then became feature articles uh but i think you're actually talking about the kind of um hour writing uh this thing of uh, it's not commissioned yet but we have to write it the stories we have to tell and and in that line i mean I, i'm really pleased with this because considering how totally paralyzed I was at the start of the year as we're at the end of it now I have uh it's not finished but I got a hundred thousand words of a novel I think several of the words are quite good too and also have a, a radio play which uh I, I think might even be might be the best thing I've ever written uh, what's it about what's it called 
I can't tell you. I'm, I'm sorry. It's written. It's with BBC Radio 4. Um, it, it's sensitive. Uh, and I can't explain to you why it's sensitive without breaching the sensitivity. You know, uh, I can tell you um, it's based on uh, love letters, actually, um, an awful lot. I love 1,700 love letters. Uh, I, I can tell you this. Um, because actually one of the things I'm proudest about is, is more, uh, it's a technical thing in a way. Those, the letters, uh, 1700 love letters from a man to a woman and not a single letter back that survives anyway. Uh, and the moment I say that to you, I think there's got to be a part of you that thinks it's a bit creepy of the man. But I knew both people, so I, I know that this, this uh, I mean, obsessive passion was definitely equal. Uh, both sides immediately that way. It was amazing to know them uh, over it. But here I am with these letters that contain incredible writing. I mean, just so moving. Some of it, things that it's, it's a privilege to bring to people. Uh, but I haven't got her side. How do I, as a writer, uh, convey the truth that I know from knowing these people with the material that I've got in these letters. I can't make up letters from her back, so how do I handle that balance? And I literally sweated about this. I There were several mornings, um, I think it took about nine months to write a 45 minute play. There were several mornings uh, early-ish on where I would wake up and realize I was covered in sweat and I had been worrying about it throughout the night. And I think I'm actually, I'm, uh, I am proud of the fact that I believe I've cracked that. When it's done, when you hear the play, when you get to the end, you will believe that you've heard both sides. Uh, and also, you've heard both sides without me getting in the way, without faking anything up, without contorting anything. I mean, the truth is, it's a massive contortion, isn't it? 1,700 letters down into 45 minutes and trying to balance the two sides when uh, there was a balance, but there isn't in the, the letters. So it's a technically, uh, I'm definitely the most technically difficult thing I've written and I, I think it's the most uh, truthful in a way. I think it's dramatically the best thing I've written. I hope so. I'm going to assume that uh, you've been using uh, writing tools, apps or something to help you get that done. What specifically have you been using? apps of course we, we have to talk about apps on 50 well actually yeah we do have to talk about apps on 58 cases the whole point 58 cases have just amazing these these software writing tools are for us when we use macs and iphones and ipads and yeah i, I could not have done this play without some tools uh for it i mean 1700 letters uh, so I, I also i i couldn't keep them i had to go to a place and scan them so if i bought a, a like a stand a grip thing so that i could put my which was my iphone 11 pro at the time so i could mount that facing down put a letter in tap put a letter in and 1700 letters uh all of them at least two pages they would be no uh, one page single space typed really dense text or two to three pages handwritten and occasionally it went to two pages typed uh, up to five occasionally the letters included other bits an awful lot of material that had to be scanned and actually scanned quite quickly so that was going through my iphone and tap 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 and filling up my iphone then it all had to be organized and sorted, which I did in a Farmaker Pro database that I created specially for this. Um, and then, I, I mean, among this, I was going through tagging things, actually. I would go through, uh, I would mark certain uh, certain of the letters as being read, R-E-D, not R-E-A-D. Uh, they absolutely, totally must, must be in the play. But they're quite long letters, so usually what I mean is that there's a segment of it. So then Omni Outliner came to play. Of course it did. 1,700 letters, something like a quarter of a million words. Uh, I had to sort through somehow. So I was putting things to Omni Outliner, fantastic lines from the letters, notes to myself about uh, the sequence. And because it's letters, um, it's letters to somebody in a relationship, the letters often don't bother to explain something because the other person, the recipient, 
obviously already knows. So trying to work out uh, the, the stories behind the stories, the clues behind there, those were going into Omni Outliner as well, that this must refer to that and uh, external sources, uh, I knew they were doing this, so did that. All of that massive, massive detail went into Omni Outliner and I was collapsing it down from this just gigantic collection of information down into, uh, I think I remember having this section where uh, this must go in the first third of the play, this obviously goes kind of in the middle. This is clearly towards the end. It's a big ending. Uh, and massaging this detail until it was all in front of me, but then also all in my head. And, and I wrote the whole thing uh, in pages then. I think uh, from what you've told me before, those are all apps that you've been using for a, uh, a long time. Very many years in every case, isn't it? At least 10 for some of them. Uh, what about uh, 2020 this year? Are there any new uh, apps that you've particularly taken to well uh, uh, partly because of 58 keys but also because i always like looking for new apps because it's much easier to play with the new writing tool than it is to actually write uh this year i have found there's a couple that have um kind of made it through to become part of my my regular work and uh, one of them that i think we've done a whole 58 keys on is uh, otter.ai which is a the, there's an ios app but it's also a, an online service it's a transcription service um, I've done these 40 or 50 interviews throughout the year for all sorts of different reasons and I think it's about halfway through um, I found this otter.ai and it transcribes uh, interviews for me I mean in 30 odd years of being a freelance writer I've interviewed thousands of people I can't remember but after every single one laboriously listening to the tape typing the words winding the recorder back I mean, I got quick at it, but you you never get to like it. And now, uh, since finding Otter AI, um, forget that. Just let Otter do it. Uh, I'm surprised to say I've become a fan of Airtable. Uh, it's a database service, again, uh, online. And I, I, I didn't rate it at first. Um, I'm a Pharmaca Pro user, um, which is like a full database, if you like. You know how people use Excel? Uh, I mean, here in the UK, famously in 2020, the British government uh, used Excel when they should have used a database and it went horribly wrong because Excel is not meant to hold data. It's there for calculations and things like this. Excel is great, but it isn't a database. Um, Airtable looks like Excel. So I assumed it was just like Excel plus. It was like sp spreadsheet and a bit that it wasn't really a full database but the thing it has that I don't have with Farmaker and that I've come to find really useful is that you can add to Airtable from anywhere. Uh, let me give you an uh, example. Um, I'm a freelance writer so uh, I run a business for it and obviously I have to invoice people so I write the invoice and uh, save it and where you know years ago I would have pressed two buttons and had it print I, I actually pressed the same buttons and now my Mac automatically um, creates a PDF uh, gives it a descriptive name so I can find it later uh, saves it into a shared folder a folder I share with my bookkeeper emails my bookkeeper I mean writes and sends the email to my bookkeeper with all of the details about it and it writes doesn't send but it writes and an email to the client and attaches the invoice and in that case I have a quick check over it before I hit send when I've hit send uh, for it uh, my Mac automatically goes into OmniFocus the to-do app I use and it adds a task of check the invoice has been paid and marks it for it to be done in about 30 days time and then lastly it goes into Airtable and it enters uh, date, amount, client, description, all of that kind of thing. And uh, the point of that is that, uh, you know, when I get around to doing taxes next time, I will now just have a nice list of all the invoices instead of having to sort through them. And that's uh, that's this Airtable? Uh, no, uh, Airtable is that last bit. It's this database that contains the details in, in a, a simple form that I can print out and use in the tax thing. Um, most of that stuff, I mean, I, write, I now write the invoice in numbers. Uh, it used to be in pages, but to facilitate this automation, I've put it into numbers. Um, and then the whole uh, making a PDF, uh, saving it around, doing that stuff, uh, that's the thing, that's in Keyboard Maestro, which you have got 
to do a 58 keys episode about the amazing keyboard maestro tool couldn't couldn't work without it so that, that's what you're doing now and as these first go out it's uh december 2020 uh what's next for you Oh, next. Well, uh, quite a lot of things, but obviously it depends on what we all get to do this this coming year, uh, 2021. I hope I hope to see uh, events coming back and things. I'm I'm really missed those. Actually, I mean, I love the online stuff. The six hour Zoom sessions with 20 odd, 25 people. Can I have those and the events? That's what I hope. Um, I've just put uh, online. Uh, I mentioned the. Um, getting yourself out of the writing paralysis thing that's online on my website all the time uh but so now is of course on how uh writers like you and me can interview people how we find people to interview and you know the way um uh you, you, you've got a novel that you, you need some authenticity your character is somebody you never are there they are a doctor or, or something and, and you're not so well then talking to a doctor is what will give you that well I'll give you the stories actually and will improve your writing's authenticity so there's a lot about uh, as a three uh, 80 odd minutes in three parts online course about interviewing uh, that I had a brilliant time uh, doing and and it's already doing very nicely uh, for me so um, that's just come out that will stay out at least for a while and I hope to do more of those um, with my own writing well uh, there's still a lot of work to be done on that radio play and uh, I wake I don't wake up sweating about it anymore because that's written done but a couple of times now just recently I've been wake up thinking there's actually a stage play in that as well so I will be looking at that I'm also revising the 100,000 word novel trying to make it any good um, and last summer in the summer just gone I had hoped to write and shoot uh, a short film uh, so you know maybe I'll get to do that this year uh, what about you eerily similar for me I don't know why that William get me thank you very much for being on 58 keys thank you for having me William Gallagher me. Um, this is the last of five interviews. All right, if it wasn't the most serious of the five, I still hope that there was something in it for you, especially as you and I are both the writers who use the Macs, the iPhones and the iPads like he does, like I do. Uh, do subscribe to 58 Keys and check out the rest of the interviews. They, they include probably my favourite theatre writer, Debbie McAndrew. Uh, the interviews, they include the developer of Omni Outliner, Ken Case. There's Martin Sketchley, whose new service helps all writers, and who also happens to be a really remarkably deep expert on Scrivener, which is so handy. And the interviews also include April Smith, one of my writing heroes. Actually, it was a colleague of hers from Lou Grant and another writing inspiration of mine who canted all of these interviews in the specific direction that they went. Left alone, I might have just geeked out on the Macs, the iPhones and the iPads that these writers are using. But Seth Freeman pointed out to me that it's the craft of writing that matters more than the tools. I might have a very big soft spot for the tools, but he is right. So after something like 60 episodes examining exactly how writers use Macs and iPhones and iPads, this week's five editions, I think quite rightly, pull the focus onto the writing and the writers. But we've done that now. Actually, I think we're going to do it again sometime. But 58 Keys in 2021, it is definitely initially going to be back on how we, you and me, as writers, can get more out of this expensive gear we've bought. So thank you to Seth for the idea. Thank you to Ken Case. Thank you to Debbie McAndrew. Thank you to Martin Sketchley. Thank you to April Smith and that other guy. And thank you for watching. Take care of yourself, eh? I'll see you soon.